record. Well, welcome everybody. Um, this is Networks Live on Demand, and I'm Liz Jones with Blue Star Families Careers Coordinator. During this webinar, we're going to hold all of our questions until the end, and then I'll ask them out loud. You can use the Q&A box or the chat feature, and then for you uh, that are viewing live on Facebook, go ahead and type your questions underneath, and I'll catch them and feed them to Evan and, uh, and Ed. I'm thrilled that we have Ed and Evan here today. I'm going to turn it over to them so that they can introduce themselves and tell you why we're here. Thanks again. Thanks again. All right. Thanks so much, Liz. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say the same thing, basically. Welcome, everyone. And I'm going to actually share my screen here so that you can see a um, really a static version of both Ed and myself. So one second while I pull that bad boy up. Okay. All right. Here we go. Hey, we're having a net. Intro wise, um, yeah, I'm one of the veterans working here at HubSpot for about two years, and I left the military Air Force uh, back in 2013. And I mean, the whole reason why, well, Ed and I are really working together along with Liz towards this, I mean, we've noticed that there's a lot of fragmentation um, in terms of like the overall transitioning support for veterans as well as military spouses. So we'll cover a few things at a high level overview here, but uh, mostly I want to hear your questions. So we'd love to talk about our experience and hopefully help out. And let me just quickly introduce myself. I'm Ed Marsh, as you see on the slide. I'm an, I'm an Army veteran, but I'm also the uh, father of a veteran, a currently serving soldier, and one that's just getting ready to go into the military. And I'm an entrepreneur, and I've, as a VFW post commander, have done a lot of work helping veteran entrepreneurs. So it's kind of a passion um, that I have based on my experience and uh, my commitment to my kids and to other veterans. And, and HubSpot for Veterans is really cool because it helps me tie my day job, which is built around digital marketing and helping companies grow, to my determination to help veterans. So we're thrilled to be here. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, Ed. All right, right into it. Um, so this is all stuff that everyone has seen, no doubt. Um, I would say that it's really, really difficult, however, to establish that digital presence for both yourself as well as any business that you work within. Um, I mentioned that I transitioned from 2013 onward. I didn't mention that it took me about three and a half years before I found um, a role in the business world, in the civilian business world, that was equivalent in terms of pay, responsibilities, etc. And it's really because I didn't know where to turn. Um, there is support out there. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, okay. There's support out there, but there it's pretty disparate, I've found, um, in terms of all right, career assistance, resume writing, um, even establishing a digital presence like the slide shows. Um, what I found was there are very there is a huge value to be had for people who can curate not only the right relevant content for you or the right resources for you, but also at the right time. And it's a very intricate balance here. And so Ed and I have been working together over the past couple of months to establish something that really defragments the entire landscape and makes makes it a support system, a one-stop hub, a subspot for veterans that'll allow you to grow professionally as well as take what you learn in the form of marketing and sales skills to whatever business you go to. It's not a hub, a subspot for veterans that'll allow Right. This is a fancy way of saying that people have become less and less tolerant of being interrupted by um, advertising, um, marketing, that's just a blast out over time. Um, obviously this has a HubSpot stint on it, but this is what I live and breathe on a daily basis. What we're trying to do right here, and really it applies to most things in life now in the information age, is to map out the support that we provide buyers as they make this journey from one stage to the next. So imagine, I mean, over the past couple of decades, caller ID, um, DVR, which is dating myself, uh, pop-up blockers being the most recent example, all of these are tools that have become more and more effective at blocking out irrelevant stuff. And that's fine, but it's also the primary challenge of the information age that we're in. There's so much great stuff out there, but 
finding again, not only a, the right stuff, but a trusted resource to guide you along the way remains a challenge. And so what we aim to do, especially with this HubSpot for Veterans and Military Spouses program, is teach this new way of doing things in the form of inbound marketing, inbound sales, and just overall business strategy, while at the same time providing real-time updates as to the best tools, the best resources, and the best people to go to for it. Yeah, this, this is really just <laughs> something that's a guilty pleasure of mine. And by guilty pleasure, I mean it's a disappointment. This is what I was presented with. Um, really upon entering the civilian workforce. I mean, one thing that struck me as I looked at all of these, uh, it, would, it would either be headhunting agencies or um, more so like job uh, boards, pay to play, whatever have you. One thing that struck me was a lot of these career opportunities, uh, they really seemed very, very similar to what I was doing before. And I didn't realize, and according to the VA and a lot of statistics that we've performed, uh, that we've uh, uncovered during our research, a lot of a lot of veterans and military families. I mean, they don't realize that there's a whole lot else that's out there, especially in the tech community, where the skills that you built up over you know, the course of experience highly valued. We just need help translating them. All right, so I'd like to take a break here just for a second. But, um, yeah, Liz. Uh, and Ed, really, I wanted to ask you guys as well. I mean, what have you what have you experienced? I mean, you've been, I mean, uh, you've kind of been in that transition or gone past the transition before I have, and you've been in the community more so embedded. So, you know, I've got a, a number of different perspectives. I've grown my own business, and I like to tell a story. You know, if I, so I was an infantryman, and I say if a trigger puller can figure out how to do this using digital marketing to build a business and anybody can figure it out. Right. And you know, I, I like to tell a story about how I got American express as my client by doing my digital marketing. So it really does work. And I've seen it in a number of different ways. I've seen it with the veterans that came through the training program that we ran in VFW that have really embraced this and seen it enhance their business. I've seen it with a simple small business like um, my dad, who, uh, ran a Christmas tree farm. And for several years, the number of customers was declining. And I said, you know, we really got to do something about this. Put together a very simple website, did a little bit of blogging, and suddenly we've got people driving two hours from, from Boston to come to the Christmas tree farm, an entirely different demographic that had never been there before. Um, and then, of course, you know, in our community, you see spouses and um, people from the veteran community that have had amazing success. Um, the, Riveter, um, the R Riveter team that has used digital marketing to to grow their business and create jobs and by growing that business, create jobs for spouses all over the world. So it really, you know, it's not just this abstract topic about the internet and digital marketing, but there's a real world impact on individuals and and businesses. Yeah, thanks, Ed. And I mean, I. Yeah, it's, it's great to hear because, I mean, it really validates a lot of the things that I experienced myself and thought could have been, you know, could have been the case. But um, working with you and working with the other veteran partners, it's just a fantastic team that's really supporting each other. I think sometimes the, the hardest connection to make is, you know, we talk, we just naturally talk often about helping small businesses grow. And sometimes it doesn't necessarily feel relevant to the individual, but your story is great, Evan, because you talk about your individual journey during transition and how you had to kind of learn to sell and market yourself and tell your own story and how a digital platform can help do that. And that's a really important part of this whole equation that not everybody has or wants to have a small business, but everybody has to sell and market themselves, whether it's for the next job or you know, the next career opportunity after uh, an ETS or whatever, you know, spouses have additional challenges beyond transitioning beds. Absolutely. I am. Um, yeah, it's just to give you a quick, just to give you a little bit of insight into the transitioning story, as it were. I mean, right out of the Air Force, uh, I finished up some night school, then I, uh, really was only getting, I mean, the only contacts and connections that I had were, of course, my friends in the Air Force. But I was getting reached out to by um, recruiting firms, et cetera. And again, it seemed like a lot of 
straight up defense contracting jobs or organizations that were very military, in, well, in form at least. So I found that, uh, geez, after that, I mean, I didn't really want to kind of keep doing the same thing that I was doing, but, you know, I had no idea how to do anything at this point after making a transition. So I, um, I, I actually Googled startups in Boston <laughs> and I found out about this cool little program called the Startup Institute. Um, it's not the same as it once was, but, uh, you know, it, it taught me a lot of those soft skills that you don't necessarily realize are important until you're out there. Things like how to network, um, how to touch up your resume and make sure it matches with your digital presence. I mean, what, when's the optimum time to follow up? How do you do an interview? How do you prepare? How do you follow up with that even? And how not to get discouraged most of all. Um, it's so difficult to translate what we do. And from the spouse side, what you do, your experience, given that it's, for the most part, I mean, it's very much being comfortable with chaos. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult to find the right resource, but I wanted to touch on this. You probably saw my cursor hovering over it. This thought leadership aspect. Honestly, the best way to uh, say protect yourself against risk and the best way to grow is to become a thought leader in one form or another. I mean, if you want to, if you're a constant student and by extension, a constant teacher, this is the ideal time on earth to be doing it. You have the tools. Um, yeah, we have the tools and the ability to broadcast as Facebook Live is showing us right now. So, finish this guy up right here. This is pretty much my poor attempt together a slide that just <laughs> encapsulates the translation. I actually found it was that you type in a military job or jargon and it'll translate it into a, the civilian equivalent. And that's, <laughs> I mean, we shouldn't have to do that quite frankly. And that's why you see so many effective uh, resume building workshops um, and, you know, straight up the digital presence I mentioned before. So having that guiding hand, someone who's been there before, that, that's what makes makes this what I consider to be like a little bit different from the standard. And these are the people doing it, just some of them. So Ed of Concilium Global Business Advisors, one of our top partners at HubSpot, hire mad skills. They actually um, assist with both sourcing, staffing, and educating military spouses. Going on down here, you probably noticed a lot of HubSpot stuff. These are the free HubSpot certifications that are available to you today. Um, you can sign up for them right after this. And I can't emphasize enough how different they are from government online training, quite frankly. <laughs> these, things, these things absolutely shorten my, shorten my remaining transition time, if you will. And the nice thing about it is that, you, as Ed put it, you can carry it with you, regardless of whether you're currently in a business or even just thinking about transitioning. You are an appreciating asset. The knowledge that you bring to, and the skills that you bring to the table. We really just want to help hone it and enable you to get there. So, Ed, I know that you've taken a million of these uh, courses probably before I even started working at HubSpot. I have taken a few of them. Yeah, absolutely. Have you seen the improvement? I mean, it's... it's so, so, I think the really cool thing here that may not be um, immediately clear is HubSpot has actually built an online learning resource for people that want to leverage their digital footprint, which is independent of the software and the company. So anybody can come there. If you want to learn how to blog to get found as an expert in your field, whether you're doing it as an individual that has particular expertise around, let's say you understand something about early child education and you want to make sure that you're getting a progression of jobs as you move from duty station to duty station, you can begin to establish yourself by writing a blog about your particular insight into early childhood education. It's just you personally and, and, and your expertise. It doesn't have to be a small business, but the point is that the HubSpot teaching tracks will take you through exactly how to do that. Um, and then there's a whole nother set of learning tracks associated with HubSpot for veterans, which is drawn from the really high caliber Sale the best small business incubators in the country. So it's uh, 
there's an, there, there's really an amazing amount of learning resources there. Um, we think I, I use the software myself. Evan obviously sells the <laughs> software and uh, lives in that world. And so we both think there's a lot of value in the software, but that's almost secondary um, compared to the learning materials that are available. Yeah, and I mean, it, that's a good point. You know, this whole idea for HubSpot for Veterans, the only reason it's living and breathing now is because all of this stuff exists already. I mean, I'm not gonna say that I'm lazy, but I'm, I'm totally willing to plagiarize or steal uh, proven content from organizations within HubSpot here that have already been approved to some degree. Sure enough, I mean, I found amazing content and learning tracks. And so right now, Ed and I are working together to really just hone in on what is the proper path for the proper person. So whether you're a military spouse, um, finished your fifth move, whether you're an active duty military member or a veteran that's been transitioned for five years, we want to have a learning track for you. And we want to provide you with a coach um, for those that complete certain courses and are interested. And this is all for free. And what it does is it kind of takes you through. So there's the, the, the reason to be online depends on whether you're an individual or a small business. If you're an individual and what you want to do is establish your credibility, then essentially what happens is you, you optimize a LinkedIn profile, you have a great resume, and then you have a site. It could be on LinkedIn with articles you've written or on your own personal site or blog. But you have a site that when folks learn about you, find you through your resume, find you through LinkedIn, they go to that site and then they learn about how knowledgeable you are and the depth of your experience. If you're a small business, what you want to do is make sure that customers that would never know about you otherwise, because you're not spending a ton of money on advertising, make sure those people will find you. And I mean, I love the story of uh, the Missouri Star Quilting Company. I don't know if anybody's familiar with it, but Jenny Doan, is a lady who uh, she and her husband ended up in a tough jam in the 2008 economy and were worried about losing the house. Their kids took out a couple loans, got her set up in a business selling pre-cut quilting fabric, which is something that was a passion of hers, quilting, and uh, set her up a website and not much happened because, you know, people weren't finding her. About a year later, her son said, geez, you know what, let's try some YouTube videos. Just make some YouTube videos and talk about different quilting skills, how to do this kind of stitch or how to do such and such. I, I'm not familiar with quilting, but different techniques. And suddenly, she became literally an international sensation. She went from having no business to turning this town of 1,800 people in Missouri into a global mecca for quilting. They now have 10 to, 10 to 15,000 visitors a month, including many international visitors. She said she has 30,000 orders a month of quilting fabric. It's Missouri Star. I'm Missouri Star? Okay, cool. Yeah, right, right there. there. Um, she has 30,000 orders a month, including many international. And it, it's driven largely, and they even had to build a hotel in the town to accommodate all the visitors coming to town. And this came because of their YouTube videos, exactly the kind of stuff that Evan was talking about. So... It's, it's that sort of a model for a small business that's helped them grow internationally in a way that they couldn't have. And it's changed people's lives, literally, and it's provided now employment and, and, and renovated a number of buildings in a downtown that was kind of run down and just made a difference in people's lives. Much the same as you hear about many of the spouse-owned businesses where, um, you know, the military member is deployed, the family's got this, this, um, uh, um, challenge to make it through the deployment and stay upbeat and uh, stay optimistic and spouses stick together. But when a spouse can start a small business and hire other spouses and share that experience and create those opportunities, it really, it's, it's an exciting uh, sort of a story. So um, there's really to, to, to just kind of emphasize the point again, if you're an individual spouse that wants to establish your credibility and enhance your job, seeking opportunities you can do that by building your digital profile starting with linkedin and building out from there and writing about your areas of expertise and if you're a small business if you have one if you run one if you're part of one if you want to start one you use the same techniques but more to attract new buyers to find you as opposed to um, providing credibility once people do find you. right on one thing that you'll notice with a lot of these small businesses especially the ones that have achieved success 
going back to the quilting example, all of these, if you notice, they're all tutorials. They're all teaching something. So, I mean, Jenny right here, make a two-way street quilt. The type of people that she's attracting to view these videos on her site are the exact, are the exact type of people that could one day join her team, could one day purchase. I mean, it's all really about educating and education uh, with the most relevant content, the most valuable for that person. So the other thing that I'll mention uh, before we start the questioning really is uh, don't pay for anything for as long as you can. There's so much free stuff out there. I mean, sure, I showed HubSpot Academy, but I mean, there's a ton of free tools out there too. I mean, if there's anything, um, if you'd ever like to discuss how to find those tools or where to go, I mean, prior to them being posted on the HubSpot for Veterans site, please reach out to one of us. Uh, we've, geez, I, I, get, I get inundated with them every single day and I've kind of like put together some of my favorites for the right type of business. Liz, I don't know if it's possible to kind of put together maybe an FAQs section on your Facebook page or something as you know, some of the questions that come from this discussion and maybe another way to help share some of the information. Sure, absolutely. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Also, we have a, uh, sure enough, we've got a Facebook page right here. I did the design myself. It only, uh, you know. So deal with that, but you can click learn more to get in touch right here. Feel free to post as a visitor and we will be recorded. Well, we'll be posting this recorded video on the page as well, along with some of the resources that I breezed over. Okay. So here's the, so, the, the biggest problem that I run into is most people are hesitant to think about selling and marketing themselves mm -hmm. and I say, well, you know, is anybody interested in what I have to talk about? And I'm not a business, I'm an individual. And, um, you know, those kinds of concerns are natural. And if you're sitting there wondering, geez, do I sell myself? Do I market myself? The short answer is absolutely. Because with as much digital noise as there is, and with as many tools out there, I mean, HR departments now use these screening tools to filter out resumes and, and it just makes it hard to get found and be noticed and for people to really understand how much value everyone brings as an individual. And so my, my contention is we all have to be continuously and aggressively marketing and selling ourselves. Absolutely. One of the things that um, held me back for a while, honestly, was this fear almost of writing. I mean, I couldn't stand writing. I enjoy reading voraciously, but I just don't like putting the pen into paper. Keep in mind now, just due to the technology that's out there, the age that we're in, there are so many mediums now for us to actually provide that helpful content. I mean, I've got a gross list right here, but I mean, blogs, sure, that's at the top. But I mean, going down, you'll notice that a number of these are things like tutorials, quilting, templates, kits and tools, instructional videos. And I mean, now I think uh, Google just invested in a free to join really radio platform. So I mean, you've kind of got a lot of different options and we want to help provide the guidance towards the right one. So let me give you an example. There's a, a veteran, veteranpreneur that, that I know from the local area. He and his wife recently bought a bowling alley. And so she's actually running it. She's the, the veteran spouse, if you will. And one of the areas of activity that's most lucrative for them or fruitful is birthday parties. And so they've got an opportunity, as Evan shows there, some of those different kinds of content. They've got a great opportunity to do something like develop the, we live in an area of Massachusetts called the North Shore. If you couldn't pick it up from my Boston accent. Um, but develop the, call it the North Shore Children's Birthday Party Planning Guide with a checklist for you know, what would you, what, what would you have for the invitations and how much cake do you need for each kid? And, um, how long should the party last and what do kids get scared about? And, you know, all those kinds of planning tips, which may seem kind of rudimentary. And, and if some of you have planned and executed many kids' birthday parties, it's probably just intuitive to you. But I can tell you that there's also a lot of parents that are struggling trying to figure out the first one and they want to do it right. So you have a checklist for planning a birthday party. You have a guide for um, all the kinds of things to think about. You have a list of the top 
um, activities in the area for kids' birthdays. And suddenly, there's a variety of different content. Then you have some video of, of a couple birthday parties, and now you've got checklists, you've got an article, you've got a downloadable guide, you've got video, you've got all kinds of great information. And in many cases, that's an, uh, that's an example of what I described in many cases, where you may just think, well, everybody knows that, except not everybody does. You know specific kinds of things yourselves. So it doesn't have to be for a fancy business, doesn't have to be for a computer business, it doesn't even have to be for a business. You could just establish yourself as a kid's birthday party planning advisor, for instance, and have your own individual small business if you wanted to by doing that exactly that kind of thing. Yeah, and to give you um, another, um, well, a little bit of a different example as well, just how niche you could get with this stuff, my, my brother, He's into live action role playing. He's built a website around live action role playing. And it honestly educates a lot of people on it. Um, I, I would say that like the one statement that rings true throughout um, is regardless of what you're doing, do it well. Have some, have, apply your passion towards this because it's going to come out in things like this, an article you write, a video you make. But and it's actually a really cool way, as you're talking about it, Evan, it's a really cool way to turn a hobby into a paying job or career. Exactly. Ha, nice. <laughs> All right. So um, let's see here. I'm gonna go into this. And as for questions, Liz, are we going to, are they populated over here? Um, I have some questions that came oh, in. Uh, Q and A, and I've got some on Facebook. So um, one of the things that one of the questions that came up was is how helps that open to military spouses? Because I know you're talking a lot about uh, mil like veterans, but for military spouses, is it something that we can seek out? Yeah, absolutely. And this was not originally the case. Um, my fault. It was uh, Ed as well as another um, another veteran partner, part of this like initial founding group here that brought it up. I mean, said, hey, you know, we're kind of ignoring a significant segment of the population. And I had not even considered it. And it's really the way that, uh, I mean, like, if we're going to take things from an overarching like, general sense, that's kind of the problem, isn't it? So we want to make it known. We want to provide support and we want to be obvious about it. So yes. Absolutely for spouses. I dropped a link into the chat panel with an article on Medium. And, and, you know, I'll share just personal experience. When I was a young infantryman, um, I didn't have much perspective to understand about the spouse considerations. It's just the nature of it. Now, as a dad actively involved in the family support group for my son's unit, I've got a completely different understanding. So when Evan says, I said, geez, we got to do spouses. We got to include them. It came from that experience from, from that perspective. So it's it's neat to see HubSpot embrace that piece of it. Awesome. Um, another question is that uh, for mill spouses, we move a lot. And if you're an entrepreneur and you have a small business, what would you say is the number one marketing thing that they should do from when they get to their new location? Uh, so per personally, like just personal professional development and growth, the edu educate yourself. I mean, it's going to be an appreciating asset. So one of the things that I've found um, working with partners is they use themselves as their own best case study. And a lot of applicants to new jobs do the exact same thing, the, be the best ones do. So quite frankly, becoming an expert on one thing and then kind of branching out from there is going to apply to so many things in life. And you're going to get that good feeling when you're actually spreading it throughout either someone else's organization or your own and always go after the free stuff first and, and my answer would be a little bit different i'd say don't do anything different i'd say that if you're really establishing yourself as the expert or the the the, the person with really creative ideas in whatever field you're in that's what you need to do regardless of where you are and then you know you put a little bit of something about your address or your location on your site or on your content and google figures that out for people um, I wouldn't really, I mean, if you're a small business and you, if you walk dogs in a certain neighborhood, sure, you want to talk about that neighborhood and make it geographically, contextually appropriate. But for spouses moving from duty station to duty station, I think just establish yourself as an expert. Right on. Okay. That's really good advice to establish uh, Establish yourself as an expert. Um, just from personal experience, I've noticed that 
you know, every time I move to a new location, there's always like the person that you go to for this. And I don't know how familiar you are with like the cupcake law where spouses seem not all spouses at all, but um, there was always one lady who was like the expert cupcake baker who was just fan phenomenal. And everyone has to go to her to get everything. And um, I'm just wondering, like for somebody who's like that, who has a small business that they're running out of their home, when they move somewhere new, how do they reestablish themselves in a new location? I mean, that's not something you can do virtually. That's like... Yeah, so the the beauty of Google is, and, and all search engines are that they're very sensitive now to the location that people are searching from and the location of where the business is. So by simply changing the location of a business on Google, people that pick up their phone and search, Google's going to connect the dots and say, okay, you're in this area and you're looking for this kind of a business. Here's the businesses that are in that area. So it kind of happens automatically. It's really interesting. If you ever do an anonymous search, you see completely different things than if you do a regular search. And that's the function of Google understanding where you are and what you're looking for as well. Evan, you probably got some thoughts on that. Yeah, with, um, I mean, I deal with it currently in the form of, we call it local SEO. And essentially, um, what I recommend is actually doing that very same Google search, but also focusing, if you're, if you're kind of like a community or local, or um, I would say in-person-based business, something that's maybe brick and mortar or people coming and uh, getting, getting some sort of consultation from you as an example. Um, yeah, focus on things like the community websites, directories, and standardize your entire message. So whether it's Yelp, uh, Google My Business, I've said Google like 18 times. It's feeling weird now. Um, yeah, you know, all of the all of the local sites, as well as the Better Business Bureau, um, anything community oriented. Yeah, I mean, go out there, make yourself uncomfortable, but just make sure you're messing. And, and right, let's say you're in uh, Colorado Springs, and um, you 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 want to establish yourself in that community as the cupcake expert. Write an article about the you know the five most popular cupcake flavors in the Fort Carson community or the at the Air Force Academy or whatever. It's amazing how the search engines will connect those dots together and help people find you because they understand what you're talking about, where you are. Awesome. And then um, I have a question here that is the HubSpot training free? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> If you anyone wants to, we'll um, link to that training too at the bottom of this video when we post it. So, yeah, and feel free to reach out to um, myself or Ed personally. I mean, I could provide you with some guidance or recommendations as to which one to complete first, but okay. they're very effective and you yeah. can post them on your profile. <laughs> that's the one that's next. What's the best one for military spouses? The best training. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, within HubSpot, um, obviously, like the inbound certification. I would say is the foundation of everything. It, it kind of touches on a lot of base concepts that apply to business strategy, sales, and of course, marketing. And then you can specialize from there. Um, I'm trying to think of an external one that I've used recently as well. Um, I would say that it's kind of piecemeal a little bit. And I work with, um, geez, I think it's Fig Leaf Software. They have a few kind of like entrepreneurial boot camps. But, yeah, we're trying to actually build out a specific live bootcamp, something similar to this that's also complemented by the Academy content so that we can make it very personal to veterans and military spouses. You know, another, another thing to, to understand about this, about how the whole digital um, opportunity exists, we've talked about how a spouse can use it to establish their career credentials and expertise. We've talked about how a small business can use it to find customers but you can also use it to build that spouse community. So for instance, if you've got a small business that is suitable for spouses living anywhere around the world to work on, you know, like some, some kit work at, at, uh, that they can do at home or whatever the case may be, you can use the same kind of a tool set to help find other spouses that can work with your business by writing about the opportunity for spouse employment, by writing about the uh, opportunity to work around the world regardless of duty station and that sort of thing. So it's, it's not just about an employer finding you or a customer finding you. It's also about building community and, and even helping potential team members find you as well. 
Right on. And um, I'll actually bring up an example that's uh, just it's coincidental, but I've been working with, um, let's see, she's, uh, she's a Canadian named Jolyn Mantai, and she's a single mom, uh, four kids, basically built her business from scratch over the past year and a half or so with a lot of trials and tribulations. And I mean, yesterday she found her first real success in the form of a big deal. But I mean, it was really, it really only started to pick up when she videotaped herself teaching a lot of the stuff that she learned within those certifications. So, um, yeah, I mean, people value when you just want to help price tag off the table. Yeah. Um, so this is an interesting question. What exactly is HubSpot? <laughs> that's a really, yeah, that's a good question. No. Um, so HubSpot, uh, the business, how we make money. Everything within that inbound certification or inbound methodology, I should say, um, attracting the right type of people to your online assets, whether it be a website or social media. Um, going beyond that, however, and actually nurturing them a little bit with things like email marketing campaigns or more robust things like ebooks and videos and uh, free online content. And then finally, out of that group, really just specifically focusing on the ones that could become potential customers. And HubSpot provides tools at every single one of those stages. So you can almost think of it like a funnel. At the top of the funnel, it's the general audience that you're helping focus at your services. HubSpot does the exact same thing. And what we're selling is a tool set composed of a lot of different tools built from the ground up and uh, a fully integrated so that you can track every step of the way. And I could, but in a nutshell, it's a platform. Ed, what do you, how, has, how have you felt about HubSpot since you started working with um, us? So, so I would describe, I would answer Liz's question in a slightly different way. And, and I'd kind of tell the story of a lot of times what happens is you say, okay, well, I'm going to start using social media. And so you end up with social media tools. And then you say, okay, well, geez, I really got to start to write a blog. And so then you have a blogging tool. And then you say, well, I got to get the website going. So then you have a website tool. And then you say, well, I want to understand where visitors are coming from and how much traffic and what search terms are working. And so then you have analytics tools. And suddenly, before you know it, you've got like 20 or 30 different tools, each of which does a different function is really important, but it more than just the, um, you know, like the hassle of passwords and logins and everything else, it doesn't tie together. So you can't see, geez, this social media um, post that I did on Facebook or Twitter brought somebody to read this article that was on my blog, then took them to look at this specific page on my website that talks about this stuff that I do really well, and then prompted them to send me an email and say, let's be in touch. And, and then later actually tie that to, you know, a, a job or an employee or an order or whatever the case may be. And so HubSpot takes all those different tools and rolls them together into a single package that lets you see the, the complete picture of, of how all your efforts are working together. Right on. Does anyone have any more questions? They're all the ones that I have. That I gathered. Can we check Facebook? Oh, that's it for questions. Yeah, make sure you check out the uh, chat pane as well. There's the URLs everywhere. <laughs> this is true. Well, gentlemen, um, there are no more questions. I'll wait a few seconds to see if anything else pops up. Yeah, I'll be hanging. All right. Really great questions though, everybody. And um, yeah, I'll just reiterate, here to help out with anything, anytime. So uh, message me on your social media platform of choice or at my email address, which I'll post over here in the chat thing. Um, we'll it's sure. what I do and I Yeah, when we post our, uh, the video for later viewing, I'll make sure and put all that information on the bottom, your contact. Thank you. Cool. Well, this is this has been wonderful, Liz. It's uh, it's I, I I love chatting with people that you know are excited about growing their careers and growing their businesses, and particularly around the veterans community and spouses that 
as I said, now with more years and more perspective, I understand the, you know, the uh, particular um, perspective. And so thanks so much for the opportunity to talk. Well, thank you guys so much. I learned a ton and I hope everyone else did too. Yeah, no, absolutely. I am. Um, I, I really appreciate this opportunity as well to reach out to a ton of people at the same time and hopefully shorten or at least mitigate some of the challenges that I know I went through and went through um, that people continue to go through today. So yeah, we're enablers in a good way. All right. Well, Karen says thank you. And thank you, Karen. Thank you guys. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Bye everybody.